What role do you think uh, psychedelic drugs are able to play in people's ability not only to experience awe, but to instill that upon others, um, and how that relates to your own work? Yeah. Hey, man, I got to be 100% honest. Uh, that quote from Tom Robbins, where I said that we need to pull ourselves out of context in order to gawk in amazement at the wonders of the world, he was talking about psychedelics. But I just think it actually applies to everything we do in life. But he says... It's not that psychedelics manufacture wonderment or that they can automatically make us more imaginative beings, but what psychedelics do is pull us so radically out of our comfort zones. They decondition our thinking. They thrust us out of everything we thought we knew about the world in order to see things as if for the first time and form new synaptic connections. You know, they, 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 they change our context. That's why people take psychedelics and they say, take a trip. Take a trip. Well, look at the physical equivalent of that. Taking a trip means physically go somewhere you've never been before where no one knows your name, see the world differently, and jump into a new culture. Like, I think it has to do with forcing yourself to gain different perspectives on how you see reality. You know, reality is made of language. And so how you map your reality really matters. The words you use to map your reality. And so I think that what psychedelics do is I think they're tools. I think they're tools. That's what I think. Which is very different from just fully advocating their use. I think that they're tools that need to be treated with respect. Um, there was a fascinating article, you know, obviously marijuana is always in the debate and it's on the ballot in three states in, in the United States. Which I hope that they, that they legalize it. But there was an interesting study in a, published in a journal called Psychiatry, I believe, that uh, looked at the phenomenon of creativity, right? And creativity is defined as just connecting things, right? Creative people seem to have this ability to connect the thoughts between seemingly disparate subjects. And, and then the study looked at marijuana and creativity, and what they looked at was the phenomenon of semantic priming. And semantic priming is basically free association. It's like, it's like you activate a word, and then it immediately creates these associative words, these associative ideas. It's like throwing a pebble into a water and seeing the ripple effects. And so let's say you say you have the word bird. Most people think bird, wings, flight. Those are the instant associations. Turns out that people who smoked marijuana and then claimed that it made them more creative, my understanding is that marijuana induced a state of hyperpriming and that it expanded their associative net so that they were able to make more far-reaching connections among things and ideas. And perhaps that because it dissolved the sort of usual separateness and sort of categorizations and compartmentalized ways in which we store information. I don't know how it works, but it seems to have worked. And so if that's not reason enough for that to be used as a tool, at least for creative people, I don't know what is. You know, there's a great uh, book called What the Dormouse Said, written by John Markoff, that chronicles the history of the personal computer and the collision of Silicon Valley and the counterculture movement in the 60s and 70s. Xerox Park, Douglas Engelbart was trying to augment human intelligence by any means necessary. They were giving LSD to all the engineers and then having them work on problems that they had been stuck with for six months. And they had unbelievable breakthroughs. Unbelievable breakthroughs. In fact, there's an article that says that Google... What about the breakdowns? <laughs> well, well that's, why, that's why the environment is so important, right? But there's an interesting article that says that Google is the first psychedelically informed superpower and that the whole vision of interconnectivity and interconductivity and we are all one is being literalized by a company like Google, by the World Wide Web. The internet literalizes the psychedelic vision that we are all one because now we are all synapses in a global brain. That's a totally out there idea, but definitely worth talking about. <laughs>